Hi, this is Francesco Rulli. I'm the CEO of Quello. I'm here with Matthew Vaughn. He's the Director of Talent Services. Uh, Matthew, if you can introduce yourself and a little bit more about your background and your current yeah, position. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for, uh, for having me on to speak with me. Um, so I, as you said, as a um, Director of Talent Services for a company based in Tampa called Full Stack Talent, um, we're kind of two main services we provide. Um, one half of the house does the pretty standard issue, traditional staffing, recruiting, headhunting um, for contract, contract to hire and permanent positions for uh, a lot of companies here to Tampa, to Fortune 500s all over the country. Um, so that's kind of one half of the house. The other half, we have a program that we do called Full Stack Gold, where we essentially become, <clears throat> become the recruiting and HR wing for uh, growth stage companies for startups, for companies that are getting to a point where they say, okay, it's taking up too much of the executive's time. We need to hire a recruiter or we need to hire a first HR person. Um, or they have an HR person, but no recruiter and, and vice versa. So they, they come to us and say, hey, you just act as if you're a part of the internal team. Um, so we're outsourced, but we're still a main point of contact. One of my recruiters has a um, title like with their company, typically HR business partner. Um, and acts on behalf of them to help run their talent strategies, to help run their talent uh, retention strategies, to go over their handbooks, policies, competitive analysis, market analysis, how are their salaries setting the whole nine yards the same way that an internal HR team would do, um, and with the same attention that an internal HR team would do, as opposed to a lot of the other outsourced models where it's a team of recruiters in who know what country and an account manager somewhere that you hear from every once in a while. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of the two halves of, of what we do. And on both sides of that, I manage the um, client end of things as kind of a, a project manager on the, the retained side and as a more of a director of sales kind of traditional role on the, the standard recruiting end of things. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, we enter this new uh, world, uh, this new era, uh, we're in the middle of this COVID crisis. We are possibly entering the post-COVID uh, era. What is your perspective of what has changed? What, what has been, uh, would be the challenges and what are also the opportunities from your professional perspective? Yeah, um, with our market specifically of the, the, the areas that we tend to um, occupy and markets that we tend to work in. Um, so we, we can hire for everything. I mean, finding people is finding people at the end of the day for most things. Um, but we tend to find a lot of success and a lot of our clients and partners are either like directly um, focused on technology or technology is an important part of the business. Um, so finding a lot of software developers, finding a lot of infrastructure folks, cybersecurity, cloud engineers, AI people like yourself, <laughs> um, and building out those teams and, and finding those sort of people. Um, so we have kind of a, I don't, I don't want to say like better or worse, but definitely different from what a lot of people in our industry is facing. Um, because at the end of the day, recruiting is uh, trying to master two things, efficiency with finding clients on the sales side, efficiency in finding candidates on the recruiting side. Um, and with that, COVID has made a lot of things change. Um, obviously almost, uh, almost all, at least for some point, if not are continuing to, um, companies are on hiring freeze, are pushing out their, their needs, are consolidating hires that they were planning on making and splitting responsibilities between existing staff to try and utilize people more, um, or at minimum tightening their budget that they would have to typically utilize a company like mine. Um, so it's like, okay, we can, we can manage to bring on this person that we need, but we have to do it for less salary than what we normally would because we can't afford it out of the budget, let alone pay a recruiter um, their fee to, to do it on top of it. Um, but then the, so that's kind of the general thing. All, everybody in the, the recruiting space is dealing with that right now. Um, the other side of it though is that candidates are not being affected the same way as most are. Um, a lot of companies are laying off office administration staff. Uh, companies are laying off HR and recruiting people. Companies are laying off accounting folks. Um, and managers and C-suites before a lot of technical staff. Um, because if you have a senior architect that's been building your mostly technology-based business for a long time, losing that person is way harder than losing a CFO. Not to belittle CFOs, but as far as like importance of the company, you're gonna get rid of everybody you can except for the people that hold your tool, your application, your hardware, whatever it is that you're making together. Um, so unless companies are having uh, 
pretty much two camps unless they were planning on releasing that person already and having problems so they go oh this is the straw that broke the camel's back we were trying to give them a little bit more time before to letting them go but now it doesn't make sense to do that anymore um or unless the company is in dire straits and is laying off everybody and or closing um a lot of developers aren't going anywhere um and if they feel safe with their company they're way more apprehensive about moving into the unknown because you go okay i work i work for uh Francesco, he's a great guy. He's not laying me off. I get this interesting offer coming from another company, but I know how my company is doing. I know how COVID proof we are to whatever degree that that is because nobody is fully, but there's definitely <laughs> a range of that. Um, those people that could have been enticed by maybe a little bit more salary, maybe an extra day or remote, maybe some better benefits, an unlimited PTO option, some things where they go, I like my job 80%, but I, or 85%, but there's, a, there's some room for improvement. Those people aren't going anywhere now because they go, I'm 85% happy with the job while jobs don't exist for most people. I'm just going to stay put. <laughs> um, so finding the clients are harder to figure out who's hiring, who has a budget to hire, who um, is stable enough to continue to bring people on because that's, I mean, a part of the conversations we're having to have with candidates that we don't normally do is having to have discussions about state of the client's business of like, okay, what's their plan for COVID? And we have to intimately know all of these things or else the candidates aren't going to be interested. And then on the candidate side, the majority of tech people are, are very apprehensive unless they're actively searching. Um, yeah, that's, that's the general challenges that we're facing that I think we're going to continue to see for a while. Now there's pockets of people that are still hiring like crazy. There's companies that are doing well with everything that's going on. There's a lot of people finding roles with um, <clears throat> uh, government work at a federal and state level because um, those roles haven't really gone away as much with some stuff. But yeah, pretty much speed to finding clients, speed to finding candidates on the, the longest way down the short road. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, from your perspective, what's the role of artificial intelligence uh, in the space? How can the, the technology help uh, mitigate the issues and probably improve uh, your, you know, overall landscape for the future. Recruiting, staffing, and HR have a very, very like not good history with <clears throat> with uh, AI tools and programs. So the majority of everything I have has some kind of AI, whether or not it's actual AI, <laughs> as as we could probably debate about all day on what constitutes actual machine learning and actual artificial intelligence. Um, and the majority of those tools have stuff set up to both monitor on the sales side trends um, of companies and where they are and how that affects if they're a proper prospect for me as a, as a salesperson to reach out to them. Um, and on the candidate side on both the screening and the qualification side. So there's a, a lot of tools that are integrated into not specifically, but like the zip recruiters of the world and the, the indeeds of the world and the applicant tracking systems of the world um, that will scan through a person's profile, their resume, the information they share, and they go, okay, this person we have deemed is qualified for the role. All of that is normally wrong, especially in IT, especially in IT, because it's just looking for very little um, snippets of things, acronyms that it doesn't really know as much as it would um, a more traditional job responsibility. Um, as well as not really knowing the nuances between them, how those connect, what position that is within their profile or the level of importance and experience that they have with it. Because the majority of tech, uh, people will have some kind of block in their resume, which I, have, or I uh, evangelize not doing in most cases, where they say, here's every technology I've ever touched, which leads to them getting picked up by more search histories from hiring managers, which is good for them, um, but not for the ones that they're looking for. Is like, oh, I touched Python nine years ago. I can put it on my resume, but I haven't touched it in nine years. And that was a personal project that I spent a week on, or I did a Udemy course <laughs> on. Um, so AI has a lot of room to grow um, on, the, on the recruiting side from that, um, as well as on the qualification side, uh, making something that is realistic and meaningful to have a conversation with an AI bot to screen a candidate. Um, because the, the majority of all solutions that we've seen are good for some things like e-commerce stores, are good for some things like general tech support. Um, but when it comes to breaking down somebody's job history, the second you ask one question that you know you'd want that AI to ask, their response could go one of 19 different further questions that need to be asked. Um, that is really challenging for 
a AI to know what to do and how those all intertwine with each other. Uh, just because there's there's so many different avenues and trying to prioritize which of those avenues it should go down um, makes it hard to replace an initial screening call with an AI person, um, which would be great. That would save us a whole lot of time. That might also delete our job someday once it gets smart enough. But uh, that's, that's kind of where um, it has a lot of room for growth. And I know there's a lot of companies out there trying to do that to, to help people find um, candidates faster, to, to qualify them faster, and to um, screen them and, and deal with some of that top of the funnel work that takes up so much of, of my time, of my team's time, of internal HR's time, where they, God forbid, you're hiring for like a tech support kind of role or like a, a junior QA, something where there's a billion of them out there and also hard to tell if anyone's good because they generally don't have much experience in those kind of positions. You're having a hundred phone screens <laughs> to, to get that done in a given week. Um, and being able to mitigate that and save those man hours of the day with AI would be fantastic. Okay, so thank you, Max, for your perspective. We are in, indeed, we are big believers from my personal experience in building digital assistants that allow a continuous conversation with the candidate so that uh, uh, you can actually uh, divide or uh, recognize which ones are the candidates that they have a more substantial experience and also interest in that specific space. But that, I thank you for your time and uh, we'll touch base in the weeks to come. Sounds Thank good. You. Thank you so much for having me.